לא אני אסביר לך, כתב את זה גם בספר שלו. כשיש דבר שמעורב עוד אמר מה, כך כותב הרמב"ם ביסודי התורה. זה נקרא שלא כדרך הנאתו. ולחולה שאין בו סכנה, מותר לקחת. לקחת דבר זה. אם אתם תמצאו כשר, טוב, תמצאו כשר. אם לא תמצאו כשר, תיקחו את זה, אין בעיה, כל הכדורים אפשר. שלא כדרך הנאתו, לחולה שאין בו סכנה, הרמב"ם אומר שזה מותר. והיו רבנים, מרדכי רצה לומר אפילו לבנית, להלכה רק לחולה, אין בעיה, גם מרן רצה לומר. היא כן, אחר כך היה שאלה על הצבע של האנשים באותה שנה. או, צבע של אנשים יש בזה קמח, חמץ, שמים על הפעל, הצבע שלהם. גם על זה הוא פסק של בטל, שהכלב לא יכול לאכול אותו, כל מיני פסקי דין, אבל בפרט. זה לאנשים לעם הארץ, לתלמידי חכמים, היה בעיות של עגנות, נוראות, בעיות שכמעט לא יכלו לפתור אותן, תמיד התבטר בגולה. בעיות ממזרות שהיה, באו יהודים מכל העולם עם כל מיני בעיות. סיפר לי דיין, שהיה רק בראשון לציון, אומר, באו אליי לקהילה, בעיית ממזרות, ממש ממזרת. צריכים לעשות ככה עולם אחת, מה לעשות? אמרתי, איך זה הרב עובדיה? הרב עובדיה ראשי בדין במקום, והוא מעיד לבנה. אותו הרב אמר, שהרב עובדיה ציטט בית יוסף שלם בעל פה, ואמר להם, בית יוסף כך ברירי קרא את זה, וכתבו את זה. וכתבו וכתבו. היה לו היום היכרות שממש נדיר מאוד. אני אספר לכם סיפור שהיה איתי. תראו איזו מקריאות של אדם. פעם, אבל זה כבר לא מידה של תורה, אבל זיכרון זה דבר פלא. פעם אחת, הוא היה רב שקרא ראשי של תל אביב, ואמר לי איזה רב שקראו לו הרב נעים, אתה יודע, על הישיבה שהם צריכים המלצה. אתה הולך לתל אביב, תיכנס לרב עובדיה, שייתן לי המלצה לישיבה שלי. והוא נתן לי כבר פעם, אתה צריך לחדש את זה, שייתן לו פעם תעלומה. אני נכנסתי אליו לחדר, ואמרתי לו, הרב פלוני מבקש מכבודו יכול לתת את ההמלצה לשאלה שכבודו נתן לי. אז הוא אמר, יש לך את ההמלצה? אמרתי לו, לא. אז הוא אמר, טוב, תתקשר אליו, אני רוצה לדבר איתו. התקשרתי, יש לו משהו לא בבית. כשנכנסתי לחדר של הרב עובדיה, הוא היה יושב וכותב. פשוט אמר לה. אותן המילים שכתב בהמלצה הראשונה, זה אני עד לזה, זה אני ראיתי, כתב את זה בהמלצה שנייה. זה אותן המילים, אני לא זוכר שאפילו שינוי במילה אחת. אותן המילים, אותו הכתב, אותו דבר, מה שהוא נתן בהמלצה הראשונה, תתארו לכם מה זה הזיכרון שהיה, זה היה משהו, אני חושב, אני חושב, אחד במאה שנה יוצא. עם זיכרון לא לשכוח דבר, שום דבר, אין דבר נעלם ממה, כל מה שהיה, כל מה שהוא קרא, כל מה שהוא, אפילו דברי דעת, אני נותן לכם המלצה, המלצה. את אותם המילים שהוא כתב בהמלצה הראשונה, איך זה יכול להיות? אני לא הייתי תמה, אבל כנראה שיש אנשים שהם, בשעה שמעבירים את הזיכרון שלהם, כנראה שהם כמו מהפקס, יוצא, יוצא אותם הדברים, מה שהוא כותב. ואני רוצה לומר לכם עוד דבר, שבזכותו היום ישנם אלפים אלפים של ילדים שברוך השם לומדים תורה, ישיבות, תלמידים, גדולים, קטנים, זכותו יש לו זכות גדולה בהכנסת התורה. תדעו לכם שזה לא היה מעניין אותו, אני יודע, לא היה מעניין אותו. כל מה שהוא רצה בפוליטיקה זה היה אך ורק אך ורק כדי שיהיה לו כוח בתוך הממשלה להשפיע, לחנך, להדריך, לגדל את בני ישראל בתורה. אומרים שהיה פעם מראש הממשלה בילה שישבו להקים קואליציות בממשלה. אז הוא קם וצעק, יש מיליון ילדים, מיליון ילדים שלא יודעים להגיד שמה ישראל. איך? ילד יהודי היום ראיתי באינטרנט בערוץ אחד, ראיתי באמת ממש כנפילתה נפילתה, כנפילתה נפילתה, ממש, 
different strands, different ways of thinking, different approaches. And because many of us grew up in the Ashkenazi world, we blindly believe that all these Sephardic literatures, they are ever, they're of one mind. It's not true. There were many Gdole Torah Sephardim who departed from the traditions of Baran Beit Yosef and established traditions of their own, which took very strong hold in the broader Sephardic community. Gedol Torah. For one example, the Benish Chai. The Benish Chai became the, the, the we'll call it the Mishnah Brewer, if you will, of the, of the Sephardic population. But he said that was law. So, but to me, in my naivete, I assumed that the Benish Chai is coming from Ben Yosef, right? Wrong. <coughs> many, many differences between soccer or Joseph Kara on the one hand, and the Benish Chai on the other hand. And the Benish Chai, of course, coming significantly later, and being a much more recent goggle, his words were law in the Sephardic community. And Babaji made no less than a revolution. So not just a political revolution. A halachic revolution. Chadei Shemeinu Kekenu. Lakzir Atorali Yoshna. That was the theme. Many took it as a political statement. Truth to that. But in his primary work was that Atarali Yoshna from the purely Alamic perspective. Go back to the works of Yosef Karo, Maran Ben Yosef, follow them, even though for the last hundred years they were not being followed in the broad Sardic community, the Father Ben Shai. And you could well imagine that Babadi had many detractors in the Sardi Alamic community. What are you doing? You're making a revolution. He said, Yes, I'm making a revolution. Al Ahas Kama the Kama, when he was there, as we heard from Rabbi Chaim, the Harim, Ateret, Keranat, Hamasarat, Saradit, against all Kamas, even those who he faulted as being Saradim, who were too readily willing to give in to Ashkenazi customs and impressions. That is one example. The Sfari Chief Rabbinet, going along with the Ashkenazi, Prohibited evil. It really is the state of Israel. The Bible was dying, starting out. He said, absolutely not. The she found that it's wrong. Baran ben Yosef says, Mitzvah Tibur Kodem Mitzvah Halitza. The Halakha the Maaseh was afraid. I ordered it should be evil. This was a shot heard around the world. Not so much by the, by the Ashkenazim, okay? But the Sephardim, because they had already conceded the point. He said, no, go back. I don't think he was ever successful, frankly, in that particular battle. But it doesn't matter. It just it demonstrates that he was fearless to stand up for the Sephardim traditions, going back to Kirby Yosef Karo and Vihima. I don't care what anyone else says, Ashkenazi or Sephardim. doesn't matter. That's the truth. Follow it, and that's all. Ravadja was born to very humble beginnings. If you read the Time of the Alami, I brought with me the introduction to the first Ravadja of Yehoman. I recommend it strongly. If you want to read something about it, don't read the Jerusalem Post or the New York Times. It's interesting. You read better introduction to Yehoman. He's talking to you, each and every one of you. B'nei HaYeshivot HaKadoshot. And he's trying to teach them that we have to understand the importance of studying Torah in its breadth, in its depth, of not chalila v'chas being mevale ha'olam to paskin shilas based on kitsure dinim, very strong. He's equally strong in the other direction. Where he's very sharply critical of yeshivot kedoshot misuyamot. That's his word, where they are involved exclusively. What we'll call our language lomdus. He has different words for it. Not so complimentary, and they don't bring themselves to the level of Allah Khalamaseh. That it's not right. Because then when they're called upon to answer questions, they're not qualified. He demands of Bidea Yeshivot HaKadoshot to be fluent with the complete literature, primarily beginning with Talmud Babli, but yet continuing through 
at least to Ben Yosef. So the tradition of the of, of those codes, straight through with all the Mishon and the Rapa and everybody. It is something which unfortunately this combination was not so common. Some Yeshivas, they only learned to through it. Other Yeshivas only learned to love this. Where are the Gdol going to come from? If you want to do something with the Neshama or Bavadya, follow what he says in his introduction. Become conversant with Shas. At the same time, involve yourselves in Halakha Lamasa. He has a fantastic citation over there where he quotes, based upon the Rosh and other sources, that an individual was studying the Rambam. He said, he, 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 this individual, this Adam Gadol, the Rosh is quoting, had learned Talmud Bavli, Shlosha Starim, Moe Nashim Nezikin, that we study in the Yeshivas. And when he studied the Rambam about those topics, he understood it very well. But when he studied the Rambam, the same Rambam, on topics which he had not covered, Kutch and Taras Ron, didn't understand so well. So he was trying to bring out the point, go back to the Talmud the Rosh, you can't just pass the base on on Shulchan Aruch. You don't know what, what it means. I remember here, in our own base, Spanish, someone opened the Shulchan Aruch and read it completely the wrong way. Khalil didn't let the Yisra Kares because he didn't know the Gemaras. And the, and the words couldn't be read that way. This is what we have to do to keep our Hakaras Atol. We heard that Rabbi Chayim was a peasant. Talmud has a Hakaras Atol. Kalal Yisra, all of Torah, has a Hakaras Atol to Baba Man. And the way to pay up part of that debt it is for those who are capable to try to follow in his footsteps, try to keep this blend of studying Torah from the Talmudic sources, and yet bringing it down to a practical conclusion, we have to try to emulate that. Fortunately, in our yeshiva, we've had role models, those learned by the Rabbis in front of the Rabbah, know that we have role models, of, 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 of many of our friends in Russia, yeshiva shlita, Following in a mold. It's not foreign to us. But still, we, we double our efforts to try to follow in this, in this manner, in this way of learning. But it's not just make a principal decision. That's how I'm going to learn. A lambda is not someone who, as Abhayim said, who knows how to learn. It's someone who learns. And they, we heard about the tremendous Hasmod of Abhayim. Trem- incredible Hasmod. Yom of Elayla, Yom of Elayla. And he maintained this Hasmod throughout his life, but for you, B'nai Yeshiva, when he was your age, Kul Torah, from his humble beginnings, from a poor house, not a rabbinic home, he applied himself to the studies, Yom and Balayla, year after year, year after year. His first sefer, Chazon Abadja, and it was Pesach, which is still a classic, all these years later, was, was written, was written, over 60 years ago, followed shortly there by the first Yavia home which I have here. You read the Haskamas. Worthwhile to read the Haskamas and to say, we can only have Torah both Ashkenazi and Spad. From Rab Herzog, Zetzal writes amazing things like Chief Pesach Frank, from Pinchas Epstein, the whole range, together with Amataya and, and the other Gedoli of the, the Spad, or I would say of the Spad Gedoli. He went to everybody, and they were all impressed at that young age with a tremendous erudition, scholarship, and you were in And yes, as some of them already began to write over them already then, he was an independent. As much as he was so dedicated and devoted to the tradition of Talmud and Svarim, and of Yosef Kar in particular, he felt strongly that everyone has to pass in the shadow the way he sees it, and even if it means going against certain those who came before, even in the Shulchan Aruch in certain limited cases, you have to be able to take that step. And he was very bold. The papers are not talking about his bold song in terms of Agunas, as we just heard, in terms of Ethiopians, in terms of, of, of so many times not allowed, I'm supposed to finish in two minutes. All the greatest of the day, which he addressed for 70 years, and he had what to say about all of them. No one agreed with him, no one disagreed with him. But he had what to say. He had sources to back up his position. I think it's important to understand, as we heard from, from, from Ben Chaim, that yes, in the broader world, Rabbi 
Ravad is now known primarily as someone who was involved in the political sphere. That's the nature of the world. The world talks about politics. Someone who was never involved in politics, the world doesn't know about. I remember Shlomo Zalman was Nifter. Who is he? No, no, he was. Because he was he, he stayed away from politics. Each one of us, each God was going his own way. He felt he could not stay away because he needed to get involved particularly in the Sephardic community. And he was so incredibly successful. Think of it. Just think back 30 years. That's all. 30 years. That's when he retired from the, the rabbi, she was shown as young. 30, that's all. And that's when he started. He established Shas. Those who remember, remember, there are Shach. He was very, very supportive. Because the Shach understood the tremendous tremendous power that Torah can have, particularly in the traditional Sephardic community, where there was no reform and no conservative. There were always more traditional. Oh, to this day, you know, there were not Shomer Mitzvot Kedat Kedim. And he understood that it could be unlocked with charisma, with force, and he propelled Rabbi Yosef to, to go in to get involved, which he did. Later, they had the party of the way, which was not surprising, with very strong personalities. But it doesn't matter. The, the tremendous revolution that was wrought, not just in the first revolution in the Halakha community, in the broader community, where there's so many individuals, as we heard, who are now studying Torah, who are now raising families devoted to absolute adherence to Allah. And yes, I want to say it, even those who are, even to this day, not completely committed to full Halakha observance. Hope they will be soon. But he instilled within them Torah pride, traditional pride, Sfari pride, so that from amongst those families that are not coming back now and in the future, multitudes getting closer to Torah and ultimately, and we would hope, the full Torah of service. So this is a man who was a giant, in many ways, a Chag Torah. In many ways, an inspiration for each and every one of us. Every time in the yeshiva, I spend another hour on a black Gemara, on a page of Shulmanara. It makes you into a greater person. No one can say, I can't do it. He did it. Again, I said, coming from humble beginnings to the point we established, or Hashem, as we heard, a dynasty of sons and sons of the Lord of the Torah, now grandsons of the Lord Torah. He did it himself. It was the beginning of this, of this chain, a chain which is, resonates throughout the, the way beyond his family to his direct community, to the broader community in Ashkenazim. To my mind, had a tremendous debt of gratitude of Avadja for adding so much to the spirit of Torah throughout the world. And yes, uniting the Dolan of Ashkenazim's family. There were always the Dole Torah of both a dot, who because they were on, you could see each other eyeball to eyeball, could have, have conversation to Dabu Yishareyehu, who had great respect and affinity to one another, even if the Dachel and Wood were not exactly the same. This happened again if you read the, the Shabbat of the Ben Nagadol, where Ravadi sat with, with Rabbi Yoshi, and with Rabbi Sholti, and many other Gedole Torah. And they were colleagues, they were comrades in the, in the best, and they, they spoke eye to eye. So much, so much good things for the Torah for all generations emerged from those conversations. And we will all be blessed that Ravadi's memory and legacy continue to inspire all of us to hate the souls for our Torah.